So three years ago, I left Southern California and I drove across the country to Nashville and my friends thought I was a nut. But uh, I drove here in my motor home and her name is Layla. Uh, we named her after one of my favorite albums of all time. And now my band travels in her and this is how we get to our shows and whatnot. So uh, let's go on a ride. What do you say? Want to take a little trip? Let's go. I first heard Slide through the Rolling Stones and uh, Led Zeppelin and just loved the sound of it and loved how it was such a vocal thing to do on the guitar. And then um, listened to the Allman Brothers and that was it. Heard Dwayne and it was all over. No band had a girl guitar player, really. I mean, Bonnie was out there playing, but she was um, just kind of doing a duo, and I didn't uh, didn't hear any women playing rock and blues guitar for quite a long time. And now it's so great that we've got Cheryl Crow, and we've got the Dixie Chicks, and there's so many people for, for girls to look at when they're growing up that are playing guitar. And now there's nothing that would hold them back, anything. Because it's so fun. It's fun to have your own band and write your songs and tell the guys what to do. <laughs> when I'm writing a song, it, uh, it oftentimes kind of comes out of the guitar that I'm playing. Like if I sit down with this instrument, it sounds a little more country blues than if I sit down with a, an electric guitar or a Stratocaster or something. They make you play differently. And so when I'm playing on the acoustic slide like this, it just brings out different sounds and different ways of playing. And it'll definitely, the guitar definitely influences how the song comes out. And while I was in LA, I was playing, you know, playing in different bands and um, got some road gigs. I played with Rita Coolidge for a long time, playing guitar with her and uh, Nell Carter. And uh, so Rita came out here one time to play a gig. We came to Nashville and play a big outdoor show. And I fell in love with Nashville. I mean, once I came out to Nashville, things really changed. And I put this group together, and we've been out playing a lot. And what's cool about being here is that major cities are within three or five hours, and we can go and we can play. And uh, we've been playing festivals and big shows and traveling doing it, and it's like I'm living my dream. You know, I love working on guitars too. I do all my own uh, repair work and restoration. And this guitar I bought uh, in Los Angeles when I was there. And I was doing my trio one night and right uh, in that afternoon it fell over and the headstock broke off. This guy broke off and I had a gig and so I re-glued it and, and I put a clamp on it and I played all night with this big clamp on it. And it sounded great. You know, there's nothing like a house gig to get your band tight. So we played there and started working on some new material and realized that maybe we should go in and start recording a new record. And that wasn't really initially the plan, but it just it seemed like a good idea to put some of this stuff down. So Feels Like Family came out of some of those new song ideas. Um, it was a difficult record to make for me. It was a, sort of the chronicle of a breakup, whereas the first album, Push the River was about falling in love, so the, the subject matter was a little darker 
but uh, you know, an album is, is a chronicle of what you've been through, so, so this is a good representation of that. I was able to get some great players on it, like Victor Krause, and uh, I was at a party one night and I met Tony Joe White, who I'd been a fan of for years, and I covered one of his songs. I've been playing one of his tunes for years, uh, As the Crow Flies. So I gave him my first album and he, he called me up and, and I asked him if he would be willing to come down and play on this new record and he did. And he just added so much to some of the tunes and, uh, and at one point at the, the end of the first tune on Dry as a Bone, you can hear him laugh as the song is tailing out and we just we had to keep it because it was so killer. I'm so elated that blues music has gotten this comeback. Started with Stevie Ray Vaughan and it keeps going. I can't believe that blues is so popular. And I love it. And it's probably because it's real. And people can tell when it's real. But you're not reaching for the holes. Some of the new material that we're writing is more geared towards the live shows. I decided after 911 to maybe uh, to start playing music, for, you know, to have fun again, and I think that's what audiences really want too. And so my new material that we haven't recorded yet, but we're playing live, is more of an R&B feel and uh, some second line and some uh, just kind of rock and stuff to get the audiences dancing and having a good time. So we're excited about the new material and. The band is ready to rock and Layla's all tuned up, so we're going to get out and play. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's a great time to go because live music is almost all you got left out there. So it's wonderful to see the crowds come out and just dig hearing people create on stage as it's happening. That's what we look for, so that's what we're going to do.